Hey, what's up everybody? You got Matt here from Nerdthusiast. Today we're going to be going over some recent gaming pickups. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Let's check out the games. Alright, first up, we got uh, Fist of the North Star Lost Paradise. Um, I haven't played a Fist of the North Star game before, but this is from Sega, um, the same guys who made uh, the Yakuza series. It takes place in that same, like, they use the same map basically when they made the game. So the environments will be kind of similar, I'm sure they'll be named different things and stuff. But uh, I love Yakuza, so I'm definitely looking forward to checking this one out. Next up, we got Resident Evil 3. I uh, haven't had a chance to play this yet. Because uh, another game's been sucking up all my time, which I'll show you guys in a little while which one that is. But Resident Evil 2 was great. I didn't finish it. I played it probably a little bit more than halfway through, but Resident Evil 2 was spectacular, so I'm looking forward to checking this one out. Of course, you guys should know what Resident Evil 3 is. Next up, we got Mario Plus Rabbit Kingdom Battles. This I got a really good deal on. There's a few games I got a really good deal on. That's why there's, there's quite a few this time around. This is supposed to be like a game sort of like XCOM, like a strategy-based game. I'm not the biggest fan of those games, but I do like Nintendo games quite a bit, so I've heard this was fantastic. Definitely willing to give that a shot since I got a really good deal on that one. We got Samurai Showdown, which is supposed to be a very good fighting game. I typically don't buy a lot of fighting games. I, I tend to stick with like Mortal Kombat, it's probably like my, my favorite fighting series. I tend to get those ones. Uh, I wait a little while though, I wait till they release like, you know, the. the XL version is what I got of Mortal Kombat 10. I'll wait until they put out uh, some sort of deluxe edition of 11, and I'll pick that one up as well. But Samurai Showdown, again, I got a really good deal on this game, so uh, looking forward to checking that one out. So yeah, Samurai Showdown, I don't know too much about it, but um, definitely looking forward to hopping into a fighting game because it's been quite a long time. Next up, we got Helmet. Helmet, uh, is a bullet storm dungeon crawler is how they describe it it just sounds interesting I like you know it's like kind of like a shoot 'em up but a dungeon crawler at the same time I, I don't know how to explain it um, but it seems interesting and they got it for next to nothing so definitely gonna check this one out then we got uh, Yoshi's Crafted World I did get to play this a little bit already I played it with my wife we had a really good time playing uh, uh, you can play two players at like, the same time I will say it's a little frustrating trying to like, you know, work together if you've played like New Super Mario Brothers U and you've tried to work together at all. You can get on each other's nerves fairly, fairly easy in these games, so, but that's part of the fun, I think. Um, but definitely enjoying this one. Next up, we got Nier Automata, the Game of the Year edition. I haven't had a chance to play this yet. I did install it on my PS4, so it's ready to go. I did put the code in for all the Game of the Year stuff. That's, that's one thing that sucks if you guys are like collecting it all. Um, the extra content is not on the disc, which to me is a huge bummer. So there is a code inside. You have to download the extra content. Uh, I do prefer when it's all on the disc. Like Mortal Kombat XL was, has all the DLC in the disc. Uh, this one does not. So just a heads up if you're you know, thinking about getting that, that there is a code to download. Now this is the game that's been taking up all my time. Uh, Animal Crossing, New Horizons, uh, I don't think I showed this in my last pickups video, but my god, I didn't put in like probably a good two or three hours into this every single day, you know, just building stuff up. I had a feeling it was going to go that way. I typically play these games for, you know, pretty much daily for about a year or so, and then I, I tend to fall off after that time. Um, but still going strong right now, playing a couple hours every single day. If you haven't played an Animal Crossing game, this is probably the best one. There's so much stuff to do in it. Highly, highly recommend Animal Crossing. Shenmue 2, or I'm sorry, Shenmue 1 and 2 is a double pack. Got another really good deal on this one. I couldn't turn it down. I have these games on the Dreamcast. I actually have, now, now Shenmue 1 came out in America, in North America. Shenmue 2 did not. So the, the Shenmue 2 that I have for my Dreamcast is actually an import uh, 
from the UK. You know, it's a, um, a PAL territory uh, game, but it has a, a boot up disc that comes with it so you can play it on American Dreamcast. So I still have that, which is awesome. That's like a very collectible thing. It is sealed. I'm not going to be opening that. Uh, I plan on keeping that one sealed, but this I wouldn't mind popping in and checking out now. So I have a way to play Shenmue 2 because I've only ever played the first game. Uh, so looking forward to going back through this. I may play the first one again too because I don't, I don't remember too much about the game, but I did enjoy it at the time. All right, next up we got Midnight Club, Los Angeles Complete Edition. Now, I actually had a friend uh, from high school who, while I think he was in college or he might have just left college, like one of the first things he started doing was he was a tester at Rockstar and he did work on this game. So that was a big reason I've always wanted to get it. I just never got around to it. And then uh, I found a, like a, a mint copy of this. Still has the manual in there. There, the disc is super nice. Um, got it for pretty cheap, so I'm looking forward to checking out the game that he worked on, which is pretty cool. All right, next up, we got Headlander. Headlander is from Double Fine Studios. Uh, this game was worked on by Tim Shapers, like you know, renowned um, creator of video games for a long time. He was the head of Double Fine Studios, who were recently purchased by Microsoft. But this is a Metroidvania style game, which is a big reason I wanted to get it. Now. I got lucky, I didn't buy this from Limited Run the first time they put it out, but they had some sort of sale. They do this once in a while where they have like extra stock. You know, they, they keep a certain amount of games in case there's issues or something that they'll use to replace. Like if, if I got this game on the first run and it was damaged, I can email them and they'll probably send me a replacement one and I would send this one back to them. But after a period of time, they're overstocked, they just start selling. So this was one of their overstock games. I'm happy to pick this up. Love Metroidvania style games. Heard this one was fantastic. Definitely looking forward to checking that out. Next up, I bought these two kind of on a whim. Um, let's start with this one, actually. Uh, I heard this game was not very good. I heard it was, like, physically, like, there, there was, you know, I watched videos on, uh, you know, clipping and glitching and all sorts of stuff happening. But I figured by now they probably put out some, like, decent patches, and the game is probably at least decent, because I was really looking forward to this when it came out. Um, but I've heard it wasn't good at launch, so I avoided it, but I got this for like $7, so I was like, well, I can't turn down $7, you know, and my, if I were to get a drink at Starbucks, it cost me like 6 bucks. so this is basically a drink at Starbucks. That's the way I look at it. So if it's, if it's not the greatest, if they didn't patch it well, whatever. Um, but it, the game looks awesome. Um, this one was one I heard was really good. This is from Don't Nod. Um, Don't Nod, they made uh, the Life is Strange series. They did Life is Strange, uh, the first one. They didn't do the prequel, which was Before the Storm, but they did do Life is Strange 2. Um, and this was the game they kind of made in between Life is Strange 1 and 2. Uh, I actually heard this game is very good. Uh, never played it yet. Just got, like, literally just got this and We Happy Few in the mail, like, the other day. Um, but... This game I also got for $7, which is, why not? You know, a great game for 7 bucks. like I said before. It's basically a cup of coffee. And then this one is for Richard. So, Richard, I hope you're watching. I miss you, man. Miss having you on the channel. Um, finally got set Final Fantasy VII Remake, and I didn't pick this up right away. I was on the fence about it. I was like, I don't know if I'm going to get it or not. I don't know if I'm going to get it or not. Um, the physical copies have been harder to get, and especially the Deluxe Edition. And um, if you guys didn't know, I, I do work at a game store. Once I got down to like a few copies, I was like, well, I better just get this because I don't know when I'm going to have the opportunity to get a physical version of it again, especially the deluxe edition. Um, plus, I really love the demo, so I will definitely make some time for this. It may not be like anytime soon, but in the next month or two, this game I'm really looking forward to checking out. Heard nothing but good things. Richard's been praising it. Can't wait to get into that one. All right, so now we've got a retro game. Uh, we got Lost Vikings or The Lost Vikings. I got this uh, about a week or two ago, and I just started playing it a couple days ago. It's okay. I heard it's really good. It got, you know, some, some good reviews, which is why I wanted to pick it up. Um, but the, the game was hard to get used to at first. You have to control three different Vikings, and they all have different abilities, so it's kind of like a puzzle. Um, and then you have, like, attacks and stuff, and, like, each Viking has different abilities to use. you gotta got to know when to use them and how to use them. It was, it was okay. Um, I got to put more time into it to give my honest opinions, but it's, it's fine uh, if, if that's something you're looking forward to. Seems like it's a little, it's not completely common to see on the, the SNES. It may be more of like an uncommon game, 
Um, but I'm starting to really get a nice SNES collection together, so I'm enjoying that. Now this game is one of the best things that I picked up as far as like collectability goes. I am never going to play this game. Let's be honest. It's Cooking Mama Cookstar. Um, this game is selling for probably about 80 bucks or so, I think, when the last time I looked at it on, on like eBay. Uh, if you guys didn't know, the company who made this was uh, Planet, Planet Entertainment. And their publisher, who published the game, they're in like a legal dispute. Like the publisher didn't want them to release the game, but they released the game anyways. It was up digitally for only a few hours in the Nintendo eShop, so you, you could have a digital copy downloaded to your system if you downloaded it within that time. Since then, it's been pulled from the eShop, um, but because they made physical copies, I think they finished selling through their first run of games, but they are not going to be making a second run, at least until the legal dispute is over. Um, so if, if the legal dispute never gets fixed, this is going to be very collectible. They probably only made, um, I think the, the minimum amount that they make of games is like 2,500 or something like that. So my guess is there's probably like 2,500 of these, uh, maybe, maybe more. I really don't know, so... It's not a fact that I'm, you know, don't quote me on that, um, that there's 2,500 of these, but it's, it's just a guess that there's at least 2,500 of these available. In fact, the batch that I was able to buy this from, I know they had just over 800 copies in the batch that I picked this up from. Shout out to Wario64 on Twitter. He's the reason I got this, because he, he tweeted about it being available again. And then... Um, Probably the most collectible thing out of this batch that I got, I got River City Girls. Now this was released by Limited Run. Um, this is a PAX variant though, so the cover is different. The original release came up and I, I thought about buying it. I was like, ah, hey, I'm gonna wait. Then it came out and I heard it was nothing but you know great things about it. It's, it's from the same people who did River City Ransom only instead of uh, you, the guys rescuing the girls, this time the girls are rescuing the guys. So if you like River City Ransom, which is kind of like a beat -em up RPG from like probably like the early 90s. It was on original NES, and they've, they've made some since then. Um, I'm looking forward to checking it out. Um, but this, this cover variant is pretty damn rare. PAX East, if you didn't know, happened um, like right before um, the whole pandemic happened. Um, if you weren't there... They, were, they weren't really selling these. But when Limited Run um, left PAX, PAX ended, right? They still had you know a few of these sitting around. The plan was probably to bring the rest of the stock to the other PAXs that were going to happen, like PAX South and PAX West. But they never happened due to the pandemic. So now they sold the rest of their, their lot online. I was able to pick up a copy. This is definitely the more collectible version of River City Girls just because of the, the different cover variant. So definitely happy to have that in the collection. And then finally, I got two extra surprises. Uh, well, no, really just one that's new anyways. But uh, you might have seen these before. This is the one that's been in the background of a lot of my videos. This is the Ultimate Guide to the NES Library. This has every single officially released, and it has a section for unreleased games. North American, you know, uh, copies of games that came out for the NES. Um, it's covered reviews. It gives you, like, an overview of the game, and then it has, like, they have five star ratings you can get like half stars also so technically it's rated on like a 10 point scale and it goes through like literally every single game and there's you know this is a legit book they're kind of expensive to be honest but uh you know full color photos on every single page uh detailed descriptions and reviews i was able to get the uh, snes version which i was planning on picking up um this is the snes version um I was planning on getting this at one of the retro gaming shows. SoCal Gaming Expo was supposed to be happening, again, right before the pandemic happened, and then they obviously uh, postponed, and I think it's still postponed. I don't think they officially canceled it yet, but I'm sure it's just going to get rolled over to next year. Um, anyways, uh, I got a good deal on those. I was going to buy them there, and then Pat Contry, who wrote the book, he put out a, a code on Twitter where you can get 10% off. Like It was the, the weekend that uh, the SoCal Retro Gaming Expo was supposed to take place. So I used that code, I got the 10% the off, uh, and picked up the book then. Uh, shout out to my wife, she actually picked up the book for me. Uh, so I appreciate that. And yeah, that's pretty much everything I have for you guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Do you guys like these, uh, you know, 
videos just showing you my recent pickups you know what, what are you guys like watching more I would love to I would love to get your feedback so leave some comments for me um, follow us on Twitter at from NJ to CA is my personal account of course you can follow the channel as well it's at nerd enthusiast um, if you could support us on patreon that would be great uh, it's patreon.com slash nerd enthusiast should be right down here um, yeah, hopefully uh, I'll talk to you guys soon. Uh, give me some feedback, and you guys take care.